teams are going to do. G-Rex, if you're gonna just tuning in somehow at this stage of the tournament, don't worry about what they're necessarily playing right now. G-Rex are an exciting team to oh, watch yes. in the two games they have played. On the Gambit side, maybe a bit shaky there in their first encounter with G-Rex, but of course picked it up against KLG. So let's see what the draft has in store for us already. G-Rex adapting to Gambit's win so far. Galio and Alstar both banned away, where the power pick of Aatrox is banned by Gambit. And Gambit did ban away the Aatrox uh, when they were on blue side in game one, but showing that they still want to take it off the board. They're going to remove the Urgot from PK. I like that a lot. I think that PK is a phenomenal Urgot player and uh, you don't really want to give him something he's that comfortable on. We're also seeing things like the Akali taken off the board and this was something that G-Rex have shown they don't want to deal with. Um, so it looks like pretty standard bans uh, so far from what we're seeing from both teams. I have to agree, there's Varus as well. So six pretty standard things, at least four that I can note that certainly we've ex kind of expected to see here. Well, things like the uh, Kai'Sa is still up and available. However, it's not the most played uh, of Stitch. Usually he did prefer things like the Varus and the Tristana. Gragas was the other one uh, that we could think about in terms of getting it for empty. Because Gambit, they put a high priority on taking that champion away from empty the last time that they played. This will leave two big picks now for Gambit. Tom Kench is a possibility here if they want to go for something a little bit more scaling. However, we have seen that Gambit like to get Lodic on a lane dominant AD carry. Things like Dilution he can have an impact on. So I wouldn't be surprised if they save that AD carry or bot lane setup till a little bit later in the draft and instead focus on something like the Skarner early on. I like this as well though. Again, away from Thresher, Edward sticking on something much more standard. We'll take Braum with Alistar off the table. And as you mentioned, Gragas was picked up by G-Rex. So denying that, as you mentioned. We'll see what the next big here is for Gambit. Because they just take a bot laner here and say, you know what, we're happy blinding this. Or maybe just take a jungler and keep things a little safe. It is tough to think because this is actually something I like. Stahos looked very good on the Scion. It's a really safe pick. There's not really too much that can go wrong in the 1v1. So I'll happily take it here. Yeah, I agree. And I think that in the current meta, it's a really nice uh, mix and match for both Stahos um, in terms of how he likes to play, because he likes to be aggressive, but you kind of need a tank in the current meta, and Sion fills the roles of both. Jirix, though, locking in a pretty confident duo in the bot lane with the Lovers. Both Zaya and Rakan haven't seen the most play, but when many of the top supports are banned away, they kind of rise in priority just because of how strong Rakan can be. Yeah, it feels like Rakan can maybe struggle in some matchups, but of course they know Braum is there, so perhaps feeling confident in whatever the 2v2 may end up being. Also like this from Gambit, we heard just then from the desk that they do want to see Diamond Prox continuing to play something with a bit more early pressure, and Talia certainly fits the bill. Had a great kind of recovery game in their win on uh, day one. Completely agree. So it does also give Kira the option to play something a little bit more carry focused in the mid lane. However, he often does prefer those control mages. Things like the Rise are still up and available. Candy showing that he does have a pretty deep champion pool and he did have that phenomenal Yasuo game paired up with the Graga. So Gambit immediately showing that respect over towards him. G-Rex showing the same sort of respect towards Kira. Yeah, and if you have away, we've seen a ton of that from him, both domestically and internationally. And Gambit now going to line up their last ban of this draft. We'll see like if they... Ooh, yeah, go on. What were you saying? We'll see if they want to continue to pick on a candy. Yeah, I was just about to echo that sentiment. Irelia is something that he played a lot of during the regular season, and they may just want to take it off the board. But they're actually saying that, you know what? Orn has been really prevalent in this tournament. Really strong engage tool up in the top lane. Pretty safe in most lane matchups as well. And so this will give Stagios a little bit more control and power on the top side of the map. Well, we'll see what happens here for G-Rex, but have to think Either, again, continuing to take things away from Kira, because you're probably expecting Gambit to give him counter pick, given what you've shown already, and them to complete their bot lane. So, kind of one pick to think about. They're running the clock down, and they will actually take Kai'Sa. So, right. going to deny that option from Lodic. So, I wonder now if Gambit choose to lock in something like the Lucian, paired up with the Braum. Uh, pretty good skirmisher, especially in the early game, with how well a Lucian can synergize with the Braum passive. You also have... Ash is something that he did play a lot of during the regular season along with Jin, but kind of their low mobility is something that I'd be worried about going up against a Rakan. And when you think of mobility, like Ezreal was the other one that's a possibility. Not as lane dominant as Lucian, but very safe. And this kind of implies the Gambit looking to play a little bit more around the top side of the map rather than the bottom. Yeah, I think Lodic is taking something self-reliant. We've seen Trist already from Stitch, actually. Versus Rakan, he had a ton of really good jumps away, but I think Lodic may be opting for a bit more comfort. So this is a champion that is very safe. Looks like PK might also be back to tank duty. Happy to take that 1v1 matchup, as he does lock in Malkai. I've seen this already if Candy wants to take it. 
finding Syndra is interesting, but kind of covering from the potential Talia flex here from Gambit. And I think Candy's just going to feel confident, given that he expects Kira to play something a little more passive. Yeah. Uh, remember that the Rise could be played into this as well. Clearly showing that G-Rex don't feel that confident in the pick, and instead they're just going to stick with what they know. A lot of good pick potential, a lot of good damage in the early game, especially coming out from G-Rex. Uh, they're not going to be able to have much push priority in the top side of the map with the Maokai into the Scion, but they will be able to play a lot around the bot side of the map, especially seeing as you compare Wave Clear, you compare the ability to dive, and you can see that G-Rex definitely have their eyes set on trying to shut Lodic and uh, Edward down. And despite showing, you know, some different styles, G-Rex were willing to play pretty quick, but Gambit, a last minute swap to Zoe. Very different kind of champion there for Kira. Not really the control mage we may have expected. And a champion that hasn't seen that much play in recent memory. No, uh, she's received a lot of nerfs over the last couple of patches. And she did kind of fall off in terms of priority. She doesn't have the same power that she used to have. Um, but still a decent pick into certain matchups. And Kira saying, well, you know what? We want a little bit more damage. That's something that Zoe definitely provides. You think about their siege and their ability to set up around objectives. They have a lot of poke. And what you ideally want if you're this Gambit squad is to have G-Rex kind of walk into areas of the map that they don't have full vision control of. Because and when you don't see things, it makes dodging poke that much harder. So things like the Zoe, the Talia, the Ezreal, as long as they kind of hide in pockets of darkness, they're the ones to get the setup on the Drake early. Then it becomes easy to just throw down that bit of damage. And then should a team fight start, you're in a much better position to win things out. So their team fights will be a little bit harder to play. And I think that in terms of the mid lane, it's fairly even in terms of who's able to get the push and when. Um, but we'll see how things go. I think it's fairly evenly matched. I like both compositions. Definitely a big difference for Gambit compared to the last time where they had losing lanes across the board. Against yes, I think, again, sticking more to some of that mid-game style that they're very well known for and did showcase this year at MSI. In general, I think Zoe just... I like it more than Vlad in this spot because Lodic is not on as aggressive a pick, so I feel like they're just, again... They need something to kind of get things going and boost them through the mid-game and get a lead. I think that's a good way to do it. T-Rex continuing to play pretty aggressive as far as their picks go. We've seen already that they're very willing to throw themselves into fights at various times in the game. And they have a go button on almost everyone to try and start a pick or a team fight. So here we are, beginning of day three. If T-Rex do in fact win this game, they will be locked in as first seed and Definitely a huge advantage going into those best of fives. Have to agree. Also feels good to kind of lock yourself into the next stage of the tournament. But uh, it can be tough. You do not get very much time at all to learn at this stage of the tournament, Vettius. So every win matters. GRX, of course, as you mentioned, can lock it all in here if they can pick it up. But Gambit, you just get the feeling that maybe, just maybe, they're creeping up in strength as the days go by. And this is also a big question too, right? Was the GRX 2-0 um luck or, or was it this team is really the top of their group and that the lms as a region does have some strong contenders outside of just the flash rules which to many western fans you know they kind of look at the region they go oh flash rules once again first seed once again dominated everyone else no one can really hold a candle to them but compared to hk's disappointing performance honestly last year grex have definitely shown up and had a strong showing and now being able to knock out gambit who to many were perceived as the favorites in this group um, or at least push them out of the first seed would be a huge benefit to G-Rex and the LMS region. Oh, we'll watch mid lane for just a minute here. Saw Candy play very aggressive last time he took Syndra. We'll see how he fares up against Kira. Nice battle star there, just getting some demonstrated back, and both Comet actually. So what you'll often see a lot of in this matchup is a lot of early pushing and poking. Um, the mana costs of both Syndra and Zoe are not exceptionally high early on. But if you're just spamming it, obviously it's very easy to limit yourself in terms of your push potential and your ability to clear the wave. So by going for the double corrupting potion on either side along with the, um, the tonic rune that you have, as you can see in terms of the inspiration tree, it does give you that extra bit of sustain, which means it'll just keep throwing this poke out nonstop, trying to harass each other and just trying to get that priority on the wave. And right now, Zoe has it, but Diamond not choosing to use that pressure, instead just focusing on doing a full clear on his top side of the map. Yeah, there's actually a lot of spells being used here to try and secure a bit of an advantage. Nice trade of CC. Kira, though, can only get an order, but nice paddle star follow up. The nullifying orb procced by Candy did manage to get an extra sphere on the end of it. Yeah, nice to see this back and forth constantly. You can see that both mid laners running cleanse as well. If a stun lands from Syndra or a bubble lands from Zoe, 
usually you die. Um, so it's best to have that defensive summon a spell to just get out of any sticky situation as Kira. You will be able to spot out MT walking towards the bot side of the map, and you can also see that both Stitch and Koala getting that early push off, kind of as we expected against the Ezreal Braum lane. You're usually forced to play pretty defensively underneath your tower, just doing what you can to farm up and be more relevant once you approach the mid. -game. Even right now, though, between the two ADs, so feeling pretty good. That does give room for Empty, though, to come here on the right hand side and take down that Scuttle. Looks like he got. Oh, oh that's a ward, never mind as Diamond Prox is going to find him now. Of course, had some vision there thanks to Kira and an earlier ward. He's going to put down a control ward pretty early, actually. Clear this ward away that I believe they knew about earlier. So Diamond has been kind of farming out these first early levels, but he's going to try and get some control back in cover for this bot lane. No, Candy went back very early and has picked himself up a Dark Seal. This will just add an extra bit of sustain to the laning phase, which obviously always valuable to have, but it'll also refresh the wards on his Corrupting Potion, so will allow him to stay in lane that extra bit long. Kira choosing to deny right now, though. He's going to get a couple of CS ahead, although we'll like that to take a back timing, given that that potion has been recharged. And Diamond took his blue, and now he's going to take this Gromp late. He's going to be spotted by Koala as he spots down the Scryer's Bloom, but Nothing too bad. Nice stun from Candy. Follows up with the W and again procs the orb. With the way pushing back, Candy says, no, I want to push this into your turret and apply a bit more pressure. Diamond Prox is hanging around the mid lane because he can see the danger that Kira is in. He just wants to help with the push so that he can allow his mid laners to go back to base. And this is a pretty big window that Candy could use to roam, invade, maybe get a bit of deep vision or look for opportunities elsewhere because he, ha he picked a really good time to go back to base. And Getting that early buy will definitely do him a lot of favors as once again, we see a bit of trading down towards the side of the map. Yep, Koala attempts to knock her, but doesn't quite land it. Still plenty of safety as he dances back to Stitch. Always got to reference the top lane. Both tanks are farming. Yep, uh, Sion will that's the have... matchup. Sion will have the push just because he has that extra bit of wave clear. He's really obnoxious to trade against in the early game. Um, but they won't be super relevant uh, until we approach like the mid, late game kind of team fight stage. Every so often, you always have to be aware of the potential Scion roam. And do remember that what we saw yes, uh, on day one was actually Stajos going back to base, walking bot, and then using his ulti to set up a play. Now, with an Ezreal lane, you don't typically want to do that, but he may put himself in a situation to counter gank if he could see G-Rex setting up for a play towards the bot side. Right now, though, just trading back and forth. Stajos looking good so far, but PK's got a lot of minions to farm as this wave crashes in. Gonna get some trading down. Looks like Empty's here with the Predator pop. He is gonna look for this gank here. A little, maybe a little too far forward here for Stayos. Has the flash. Gonna have to use it, but a great follow flash from Empty and just cleans up first blood. Now Kira is gonna flash in, pops the paddle star, but PK flashes out of the way. Flash picked up by Kira, looking to dive in onto Empty, but needs to land the bubble. Can't grab it. And that's a clean first blood from G Rex. Really good start to the game from G Rex. They end up going towards the top side of the map where Stayos does have the push. They end up punishing him for it, and Empty. Great use of the flash, expecting Stajos to throw it out, and now Gambit looking for something in return. Yeah, Kira looking, he's gonna try and find a good dodge there from PK, but he is gonna die to Diamond Prox. Nice answer there from Gambit. So Diamond walks around behind the tower alongside Kira because they're expecting PK to still be there, and unfortunately, he just didn't walk far enough away from the tower. Stajos had TP'd in, and they were able to find themselves a return kill. But while all that was happening, Kanye was just continuously pushing in the mid lane, and he's built up a pretty big CS advantage in the mid lane. Great Dark Sphere buffer as well by Candy. Does get Kira after the stun despite being asleep, but Kira also able to find the trade and now chug some potion charges. And heal really coming up big right there. Empty now looking for a gank in mid. Coming back at it, doesn't with the flash, but Kira, oh no, Portal Jump gets himself altered, and that's a sitter for Candy to collect. Remember that Kira used his flash up towards the top side of the map. He did have the cleanse available, but it did not matter. Empty was able to land the body slam. He even interrupted the Q from Kira, and G-Rex will find themselves another kill. Empty, once again, coming up huge. Well, if you are back down to the bot side, you mentioned it already, Vetti, but this pressure from Zaya and Rakan in the matchup was expected, but the tower starting to take some hits. Lodic is close to 20 CS behind, and sure he's staying safe, but this pressure still mounting for G-Rex, and as they picked up kills, towards the midsection as well. Looks for them to maybe carry this pressure either down to this bot lane to look to extend and break open the turret, or maybe to go back top and help PK out who has, is maybe going to struggle after that trade kill. Ooh. In fact, Diamond's back again. 
Stehos. He's going to start it up already. Burns the ulti. Diamond over the wall as PK with no flash. He's just left out to dry. He's going to fight as best he can. Sap the magic where he can. A great set of dodges, but not enough as empty. Comes empty. He's going to try and trade back in. There's the ulti. Alley -oop towards the turret. Not quite in range to get the hit. And the chilling smite channels the W. But can't get back in for the kill. Stehos walks away. Not quite enough damage. No flash either. Gambit answering back with aggression of their own as the kill score makes its way to two and two. Very bloodthirsty early game. And I like this from Gambit, because the last time we saw them against G-Rex, again, they kind of picked some lanes that weren't so favorable, lost a little too much pressure in the early to mid game, and just kind of fell down as the fight started. But this time, they're taking the fight to G-Rex when they can. As Kira, again, trading with Candy pretty nicely, but Candy up in CS, starting to exert a bit more pressure in this 1v1. Yeah, and you talk a lot about uh, the early game slowly starting to go in the favor of G-Rex. The last time they met, a lot of it was off the back of Empty in his game versus Gambit. And this guy, expectations were low. We heard the analyst test talking about it, and the guy only played five games during the regular season of uh, the LMS. He only, and three of them were in the gauntlet. Right, so this guy didn't have a huge amount of experience with the team. He didn't uh, have huge expectations, but going into his first day in the playing stage, he looked exceptionally strong. A 15 KDA, a goal difference of 15, of, of 500, and the fact that he was finding so many early kills was pivotal and allowing G-Rex to be able to come out on top. That's a wonderful bubble candy. He's going to be forced to cleanse away. Kira also dodges the follow-up stun as Koala roamed in. Ready with the recombo, but doesn't pull the trigger. Instead, G-Rex invading onto this blue buff, but Diamond does see them. Oh, that's rude. Pulls the buff away, and that's going to be collected by Sintra. Nicely done there from G-Rex, using the pressure that they have to steal away some of these neutral objectives. If we look across the farm as well, you can see that pretty big advantages being built up for G-Rex. We expected it to happen in the bot lane, and a 20 CS lead is huge, but it's also happened in the mid, and that's because Kira was roaming around a lot in the early game, and he died. Uh, so two of these lanes are winning in favor of G-Rex, and this was a similar situation to how Gambit found themselves the last time these two teams met. And again, MC has been so proactive in this early game. Now going to sweep out the wards. He and Koala are going to threaten a very potent dive as the dodge there from the Twisted Events will get under the Decimator Stehos. He's going to dance around. He's going to throw some creeps. And right now, just in my bottom lane is that focus. Koala again trying to apply pressure. Turret is a few feathers away from giving that early goal over to G-Rex. Gambit. You look at that composition, you can still see an ability to come back during this. Even though they struggle in terms of the early laning phase, falling behind Desire is kind of what you would expect. And you're still kind of looking at the Pope's strength there. But this could be bad. Edward forced to flash. That's Lodic dead, though. They split up. And that's going to give that first turret as well over to Stitch. 600 uh, gold for Desire. Definitely not what you want to happen if you are Gambit Esports. They did what they could in terms of trying to defend the tower, but they shouldn't just abandon it. They should have looked to swap towards the top side of the map, knowing that that tower was going to go down, and perhaps look to play for the Rift Herald. But now, G-Rex see this play, and they're going for the collapse. PK actually just going to get them off it, as the rest of the team is also coming up left-hand side. Herald still out and about, but it's going to leash back to the pit. And with G-Rex here, maybe they think of starting it on their own. It looks like they're just happy well, yeah. leaving it for now. They've now swapped towards the top side themselves because they secured the bot tower. They're not that interested in the Cloud Drake, and Stajos, he could be in some trouble. Well, again, looking. No ult does grab the knockup, though. Stajos with a flash ready, but ulti also available. Here's Diamond, though. Maybe going to turn it back around. Flash from PK. Very respectful. Does not want to get knocked up as four from Gamba rotate top. Going to match that spot from G-Rex's bot lane. But like you said, I think Gamut were doing well to kind of match some of these moments, Betty. But now they've just made maybe one or two errors here and there. And they're starting to fall a little too far behind. Yes, they certainly are. Uh, the fact that it's a 2,500 goal difference at only 11.5 minutes into the game speaks to the impact that MT was able to have and how well Stitch and Koala have been playing this two versus two. It's one of the reasons why Ezreal kind of fell off in the meta as well, because often if you're in a losing lane matchup, you can rely on the late game scaling. But... Ezreal doesn't have the greatest late game. Uh, he doesn't often build towards crit. Kira could be in some trouble. But, oh yeah, that's a really nice Dark Spear! And the ulti enough to kill. Well calculated there by Candy. And Kira, he was just hanging around. He was like, okay, I think I can interrupt Candy's back. And then Candy was like, you know I have all my mana and a full health bar, right? Uh, and then Kira didn't use his flash. He didn't respect it. Ends up going down, and the gold lead builds ever greater for that of GRF. Well, we'll get it here again as Kira tried to find a bit. Here is our Acer Predator replay. So you can see the bubble misses. Kira now has nothing. He should cleanse flash here. He doesn't. He and he ends up eating 
Oh, it's actually only five. I, I thought uh, Syndra had been able to put six Dark Spheres down, but still more than enough damage to secure the kill. And now G-Rex. They have control of a mid. They have the bot tower secured. They haven't secured a Rift Herald yet, but they can pretty much grab it whenever they want because of the priority that they have in the top lane where Stitch will constantly be able to push this lane in. And things are looking really good for G-Rex in the early game. Uh, Gambit, the way in which they come back is utilizing their poke when setting up around objectives like Ezreal, uh, Zoe, and the Talia. We already talked about how much long range damage they have, especially in like areas of darkness. Uh, but getting those areas of darkness is the hardest part because when G-Rex have this much control in the early game, they often have the ability to set up way more vision control. You can see they are at least maybe thinking about it here. Tejas was hanging out in that brush, maybe hoping to catch a straggler. But again, G-Rex just playing back, respecting some of that pressure and transferring. Looks like to mid lane. This may give the turret over to Gamma, but Koala wants to dive here. Kira the target. Predator already popped. There's a the recombo. Cleanse from Kira is good. The flash used. They didn't use earlier, we'll save him at least this time and stay us in for the wave clear by the looks of things. It looked like the G-Rex were just trying to zone Zoe away and siege up towards the mid lane tower. But with the Scion here, it may have been enough of a turret. Never mind! Four members, or five members rather, of G-Rex will be able to secure that as a trade for the top lane tower, and they're more than fine with that trade. I'd love to see them get their hands on this Rift Herald soon, because then they can use it to break a tier two tower down and it will give you that much more control. Well, they don't know, but they're on a ward right now, starting the Herald, maybe thinking G-Rex would have been caught in a back timer. But again, Kira looks for Candy, great. Bit of damage, is empty. Body slams in the block to follow up, but Koala maybe gonna catch him. Damage follow up is there, empty over the wall with the flash, and Kira is gonna go down. The Herald though, did fall. Who is gonna grab it? Stitch gonna try and get them off the buff. As he ulties aggressively forward and pulls back the feathers, doesn't quite grab Steos on the end of it. It was Gamma that picked up the Herald, but I don't think they can get the eye. It doesn't look like it, and this is what we were talking about. Initially, things looked promising. Steos going in. He wants it. Someone's going to try and grab a diamond also over the side of the wall, but I think it's just to their death. Steos still fighting in the pit. Damage is there. Does flash over the wall. Edward burns his ult to make sure that he can get out safely. The most tense Rift Herald fight I've ever seen. Oh, great flash there from Stitch. Just barely able to get away from Lodic. It's lost so long. Rip Harold Eye, and it's gone. All right. Successful em defense from G-Rex. Empty manages to time it out. G-Rex lose no one in the process. Just a few summoners here and there, and continue to find themselves further and further ahead in gold. So, this is how you want to be utilizing this comp if you're Gambit. You just kind of stay in Fog of War, you land this kind of poke. The problem is Kira gets overzealous, and he just sticks around too long. Then he ends up getting punished as a result because the rest of G-Rex are ready just behind the wall to, to get that kill. While Gamut do secure the Rift Held, no one sticks around long enough to secure the objective. And then you end up with this really long back and forth trying to secure it in what was the most tense Rift Herald I fight I think I've ever seen. I see that one too often, but at least a consolation cloud here for Gambit as they do pick up Drake 1 in this game. And also uh, bolstering their forces down here to the bot side of the map. Pretty big wave that Stehos has curated. We'll move them down here to at least grab a trade if they can. T-Rex a little slower on the recall this time around, but yeah, looks like they so. have enough people top side to trade the turret here. I think you're right though, Pastry. The fact that four members are bot and Kira is mid to be able to hold the wave for the time being means that Gamma can just keep pushing because there's not enough of an answer from the side of G-Rex. Rakan is still in base. You can see the empty is just jungle clearing right now and two of the big damage dealers in Candy and Stitch are nowhere near. So Gamma feeling more than happy to just continue with the pressure. Yeah, pulling three utility champs to try and clear this out. I guess Runic Echoes from MT is going to help out as Candy tries to finish off this turret. Going to take the wave as it moves in. Stitch actually mid right now. Pushing that wave away from Kira. Gambit though, continuing their invade. Under the red buff, might be able to grab it here. Flick back from Taleo is good. And Gambit will take it. Candy finishes off the top out of turret. The thing is, G-Rex, you can't really contest for the red buff when there are five members bot. <laughs> and again, as we said, because they didn't have Candy, they couldn't really look to contest. Fortunately, while that was happening, Candy was able to continuously push in the wave towards the top tier two. And now they can use this as an opportunity to just make sure they have full control over the top side of Gambit's jungle. So G-Rex, while perhaps a little slower on the play, definitely still able to gain a lot off the back of this. With Baron spawning in about two and a half minutes time, having this vision already makes finding those picks that much easier. And it is basically impossible to move through this jungle safely. Candy and Empty were hoping somebody took the lazy way through. 
as the TSU was being pressured by the bot side of G-Rex, but might have to give it up after this and reset as the objectives are coming back around, like you mentioned, Baron. Something the team will have to start thinking about. And now Gambit, as they are picking up their items, but unfortunately for them, not quite there yet. I mean, don't need to look at the gold right now to get the an indicator of the differences. Just look at the difference between mid lane and bot lane for both these sides. There are completed items on the side of G-Rex. And those carries have not completed item one yet on Gambit. Diamond is kind of the saving grace right now for Gambit in that he's found himself two kills. He's doing really well in terms of farm. He's picking up some substantial items and has a healthy goal lead over MT. But if you think about what MT has been able to do in terms of getting his lane as ahead, you're going to give that big advantage over towards G Rex. And Candy being this strong and Stitch being very close to completing his second item. Gambit kind of want to avoid fighting right now. Again, utilize the poke that they have to slow T-Rex down. Don't allow them to take down those tier twos. Otherwise, this game could snowball out of control or much more than it already is. And look, if we've learned anything from watching Gambit this year, they are a Baron-centric team Very when true. that mid-game rolls around. So never count them out until the purple one has been felled. But G-Rex, of course, should know that as well. It's going to reset and prep this map. I think it's important to remember, too, that when you look at Gambit, often during the regular season, they fell two deficits and then found their way back into the game. So I'm going to say that they have experience in this area, but G-Rex have also shown to be a team that once they grab themselves an early gold lead, they know what to do with it. They, don't, they haven't, so far in day one, haven't made that many mistakes. So we'll see which one comes out better, the ability to close or the ability to store. I think for me, the most impressive thing about G-Rex has just been how calculated and kind of calm they've been when they're playing like you kind of look at these picks especially and you think okay they're going to be hyper aggressive as a team i think they're willing to be aggressive when the moment is good and their execution individually as players is very high but they haven't gone like crazy mode yet in the games that i've watched and again gambit's coming up they play back they land a start they go in and there's a combo shutdown diamond brox falls to candy another good pick found by g-rex and now they can start sieging onto these tier twos gambit all they needed to do was sit back and wave clear. They didn't need to try and find a pick themselves. But instead, they opened up the opportunity for Jirix to go for the play. Koala instantly with the flash ulti. And they set up nicely to find themselves a kill onto Diamond Prox. Now the Baron is live, Diamond Prox is dead, but Jirix, they're not being overconfident. They don't want to run the risk or the gamble of getting it stolen away. So they're just going to take the advantage that they've gained and back off. Yeah, I'm going to push the wave into mid. Tier two is pretty low as well, so Another easy point of attack for G-Rex as they come back off these recalls. But let's watch this one again. Gambit is in the wrong place this time. So they see Empty and Candy up towards the top side. And they should have vision on Koala, but they don't respect it in time. And Candy makes for a very easy stun. He just puts the sphere down, knocks the E, lands onto two members. And this was just a lack of respect that we're seeing here from Gambit. So they're falling further and further behind. Their windows of opportunity to come back into the game are kind of revolving around this Baron buff right now. They either need to get a steal or they need to find enough damage onto G-Rex with their poke in order to turn it into a successful fight. But it's difficult because G-Rex, they have so much pick in their composition with a Maokai flank, the Ragged Barrel, the Syndra stun, the, the Rakan engage. There's so many opportunities to just catch a single member out and burst them down that Gambit have to just play with so much patience, which so far they haven't been able to do. Yeah, I kind of like how G-Rex build their team comps in some ways. They had four knockouts for Yasuo on their team. Actually, I think they had five, including Yas himself. And this team, everyone's got some CC, including Stitch, even though it's pretty unreliable as far as marks and CC goes. So the consistency in how they build their comps, I think they can play a lot of different styles than they are, but they are pretty one-minded in the way they want to play when they've decided what they want to draft. And remember that G-Rex are fighting right now for that first seed in the group. This will guarantee them the first seed in the best of fives, which means that they'll obviously go up against the second seed in Group A, B, or C. And with the way things are going, one of them could be G2, but we'll see <laughs> later on uh, into the play-in stage. For now, G-Rex looking convincing. Six, to ki six kills to two in their favor. A pretty healthy gold advantage as well. I'm keeping my eyes on that Baron buff. Where is the vision going? Who has control for the time being? Well, 5k up and the Infernal just taken with a second on the way. This turret was going to be pretty straightforward for them to take before. Good wave clear from Kira with the Proto Belt, but not quite enough to get it all. And G-Rex will collect turret number five in this game. And once more, just backing off. Time to go back, spend that gold. 
Move it out to the other side of the map. Move PK down here to the 1v1 and put your teleport in the furthest away lane from the objective you want to play. I mean, this is all stuff that we know, Vidius, but I think, the way, again, the way G-Rex play for a team that is so willing to be aggressive and pull the trigger, they seem also very calm and very calculated, which is not something I would have expected. Yeah, uh, I like the way in which G-Rex are playing right now. I think that they have to be respectful of the two-item Ezreal. He's now completed both the Trinity Force and Mana Mune, which means that he will hurt. And if G-Rex don't position in a way which will allow them to take advantage of their strong pick and high burst damage, then the consistent poke and siege that can come out from this Gambit squad could allow them to close this gold gap. Oh, going in actually stay us in the front side, gonna tank some damage, but good block from Edward. It's the Feathers fly out from Stitch. Flank so here from PK. Really nice angle on the ulti, but Diamond Prox, he's gonna be the first one. He's gonna cut them off. He might save his team. He fudges over his own wall. And Steos looks for the re engage. Stop watches as Koala takes a big chunk of damage from Kira. But they left the Scion out in the front side, and G Rex swoop in for that kill as PK diving back in towards the rest of Gambit. Zombie Scion buying a bit more time. Drowsy onto empty. He's gonna move Kira forward as Candy. He's gonna let the ulti rip. Needs to follow up the stun. Not quite enough distance as Kira will get away this time. Pretty close fight between the two teams, but Jirex are the ones that find the kill and are the ones in control. They're now making their way towards the Baron. PvP Steros is dead, but that is a low death timer, but his teleport is not available. Koala trying to run interference, doesn't have too much left on the cooldown side. He's gonna pop the boss cone and just try and zone Diamond out of this, but he's walked back around. I don't know if G-Rex can really stay. The bubble from Zoe Koala again. He's trying to keep Kira out of there. He ignites him down, he might get a kill. 1v1 versus the mid lane. He does grab it. Zoe dead. And now G-Rex re-engaged. Shut down there for Diamond, but two more kills over to G-Rex. And G-Rex just keeps finding kill after kill. Gambit will successfully force G-Rex away from the Baron, but they continue to fall further and further behind. It felt like a bit of a split call there from Gambit as they were setting up the siege onto the tower of G-Rex. That's when they looked for an engage and Unfortunately, things didn't quite pan out the way in which Gambit wanted them to. So, as the replay gets thrown up, we can see... Oh, so we skipped the initial fight where Stadros ended up losing his life. And then we can see here, from the side of Gambit, they're just trying to poke them out, trying to force them away. And then Lodic, he gets just a little bit too close alongside Edward, which makes it very easy for G-Rex to just then flash in, get the lock down. And then with a the Maokai plus Gragas plus Chain CC, pretty easy to secure yourselves two quick kills. So I like the decisiveness there from G-Rex to punish the overextension from the Gamut members. And that's the face of a man that just got killed by support Rickon. Tough stuff, I mean, Koala did well despite the death. He baited Diamond over, he managed to get the kill on Kira and gave his team two more kills and continue pressure back around the Baron area. I mean, G-Rex, it feels like they can barely put a foot wrong so far in the playing group stage. That gold is continuing to grow. Showcasing the damage output that Kira is capable of with the Zoe. Uh, if you do have enough time to land that poke, but it's still difficult when you get forced into these fights. They're going again, straight on to Stehos. No, they've got enough damage to at least force him to use cooldowns. He does flash away. And again, they'll continue to try and zone Gambit away from the Baron pit. Nice bubble though. Only onto the tank. PK will walk out of that one pretty simply. But now just both teams grouping. Gambit yet to land any poke, really. Not able to properly utilize their composition. Can be tough when, again, the lanes are getting pressured, which has really been what Jirix has Here done. Here we go. Right, just Corey popped by PK. Stun is going to miss there from Candy, and that's nothing actually for Jirex. Yeah, good disengage there from the side of Gambit. They utilize the range and slow CC from Diamond Prox. While they do get the flash out from Stagos, Jirex still unable to find the fight, but here's PK on the flank again. Another glorious angle here from the Maokai Kira. Maybe the first bit to tie it up. Both made is getting it locked down. They need the jungle up. They're not going to look to take him down. Diamond will fall to Stitch and Stehas boosted into the team by the Gragas ulti. Candy dominating as Stehas goes down again. And Jirex with the jungler picked off might look to chase more. They want another kill. They want Kira. PK finds the lockup. MD able to grab it. And Baron's on the table, we'll see if they push or go straight to the worm. G-Rex looking good in their first game of day three. They were able to find themselves three quick kills as a beautiful flank from PK was able to set them up for success. The Baron is now in their eyes. Three members of Gambit are dead. I don't know if they can challenge this. And Candy zoning. Has to be careful of Lodic, perhaps. The poke is pretty strong in these situations, but Koala gonna come out here as well. Moves the shield back around. It will take a miracle steal here from Lodic. Who doesn't even have his ulti? And that combo from Candy demolished.
finishes the Gambit AD carry. And G-Rex, they'll get themselves a kill and they'll get the Baron. An exquisite pick there from Candy, who's had a fantastic game. 6-0 and 2 on the Syndra. We'll shut down the Ezreal and we'll allow the Baron to come through. So keep your eyes on the minimap. You can see the Maokai sitting in just behind Kira and Diamond Prox. And those are the two targets you need to lock down. The moment they are, Stitch immediately jumps onto the backline with PK. You combine that with Koala as well, and they have more than enough damage to kill the jungler. Then it's just a matter of systematically working your way through whoever is left. And the moment Kira uses his ulti, he's saying, Maokai, Maokai, please root me. He does so just just so the he very kill. 3D portal jump, but again, Gambit, they try something, they know they need a miracle around the Baron, and unfortunately, uh, all it gets exploded. Lot of damage. Squishy Ezreal, man. Almost a four item Syndra. Yeah, 28 and a half minutes. Three fully completed ones for Candy, plus the Sork Shoes, and 10 stacks on the Dark Seal. It's not been a bad day for the G Rex mid laner. Yep. There was some optimism on the analyst desk that uh, Gambit would be able to bounce back, but G-Rex have shown their consistency. Empty has been phenomenal. You've got to give credit to Candy too. I feel like that his Syndra has been great so far throughout the tournament. And with the win here, they will lock in that first place spot in uh, their group, which will definitely, definitely be a big positive, especially when you consider how HK performed last year. They weren't quite able to get out of it, but this really increases your chances of G-Rex making it to the group stage of Worlds. I feel like, you know, the flash are always there, and then there's almost a, a semi-rotating door of teams that come from the LMS and have kind of mixed results. G-Rex are looking to really put their stamp on the World Championship early on. They will take the turret. So Leo Wall doesn't quite cut him off a diamond, and they'll just dive into the front line again onto Stehouse. PK pops the watch. Goes golden as Koala, dives to the backside, trying to find the carries. Charms up one, dances back around a stay house rooted in place. Will be killed by Candy, who now goes godlike, and it's gonna be a mess. A double kill for Syndra, who finally gets picked off by a zombie scion. But Lodic forced to get away, does bother the arcane shift out of the route there from Maokai. But G-Rex, they're just gonna walk it in. They've still got Stitch alive. It's four versus two. The bot lane again, trying to defend this Nexus. G-Rex, they still have four members alive. There's very little that Gambit will be able to, to defend. The TP is going to come through from the side of G-Rex as well. They have their eyes set on the Nexus and first seed in the group. Certainly only two turrets and a thrown away from taking this all down. Well, and Edward fighting for their lives. It's 10 seconds left on the nearest Gambit member, but it's just not going to be enough. G-Rex continue their rampage through the group and they'll finish atop it in style. Fantastic stuff from G-Rex. I think you can confidently say that G-Rex is looking good. Uh, there were question marks. Will they be able to maintain that consistency? Will Gambit be able to bounce back? But I feel like G-Rex, once again, they drafted a strong 2v2 lane down towards the bot side. They demolished Lodic and Edward. Uh, and then we saw, while we saw glimmers of hope from Diamond Prox kind of matching some of the early aggressive plays that we did see from Empty, to me, it just felt like that Empty was the one coming out on top. And because he got his laners ahead, they then used that lead to shut down Gambit's laners. And so while Diamond Prox was fed, Kira ended up falling massively behind in the laning phase. Lodic couldn't compete with the amount of damage output that Stitch could throw out. And even though PK was down, he's a Maokai. So he always was relevant later on into the game. And with some fantastic flanks, they were able to find some really convincing team fights. And overall, got themselves a very solid win. Yep, looking good. Pretty much across the board there once again for G-Rex.